In this video, I'm going to show you how to navigate the pattern and get started on the Camilla Tunisian cardigan. This is a side-to-side -side construction cardigan worked in Tunisian double crochet with stripes. The pattern is sized from 36 inches to 60 inch bust measurements, and the sample shown is in size 48 inches. This is a very versatile pattern. First of all, it comes in five sizes. It's worked cuff to cuff, so you have the options of adding the sleeves or skipping the sleeves and making a vest, adding the belt or skipping the belt. You also have options for either doing it in five colors like I showed in the photos or doing it in a solid color. And you can find information in the pattern for how much yardage you would need per size for either making it in all five colors or in one color. Also, Be So Baby Yarn comes in 60 colors. And if you need some help pulling five colors together, Check out this video that I'm going to link here to give you a lot of color inspiration for how to combine five of the 60 colors of Be So Baby yarn to do this. You will also need a Tunisian crochet hook for this project. Sometimes I talk about the fact that you don't need a Tunisian hook to do Tunisian crochet, and it does depend on how many stitches you're going to be requiring for your project. Because we're working a full-size garment, we are going to not only need a Tunisian hook, but we're going to need one with a cord on it just so that it can hold the number of stitches that we're going to be adding on for this pattern. I will not need this whole cord for the tutorial because I'm going to do a reduced size sample, but you will need this for making any of the sizes of this project. Okay, the pattern begins with the back and it begins with a setup row. You want to tie your yarn to your crochet hook. You can use a square knot, slip knot, does not matter whichever works best for you. Just make sure your tail is long enough for weaving in your loose ends at the end. And our setup row starts with foundation single crochet. You want to chain two for your first foundation single crochet. And then your second one is to insert your hook into the second chain from your hook, yarn over, pull up one loop on your hook, yarn over, pull through one loop on your hook, and then yarn over, pull through two loops on your hook. That's your second foundation single crochet. Notice how there is a vertical bar over here to the side of the work. We're going to insert our crochet hook into that loop, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through one loop on your hook, and then yarn over, pull through two loops on your hook. Another foundation single crochet is created. And now we also have a new vertical bar over here to the side of our work. You wanna insert your crochet hook into that loop, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through one loop on your hook, and then yarn over, pull through two loops on your hook. Another foundation single crochet is made. And you wanna repeat this for as many stitches as is required for the pattern. Obviously, this is a reduced size sample, but this is what your work should look like after the setup row for the back. And you should have a section of foundation single crochets. Row one, we're going to begin with our first row of Tunisian double crochet. The loop on our hook counts as our first chain, and then we're going to chain one, and that counts as our first stitch. We're going to skip the first stitch here, and then yarn over your hook, Insert your hook in the next stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two loops on your hook. That's the forward pass of our next stitch of Tunisian double crochet. And we're going to repeat this all the way across. Yarn over your hook, insert your hook in the next stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, and leave the rest, leave that loop on the hook. Tunisian double crochet is worked in two sets. There's the forward pass and the return. And so this section of yarn over, insert your hook in the next stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two. This is the forward pass. And you will be putting a loop on your hook for each of the stitches across the forward pass. This is what your work should look like after the forward pass of the first row of Tunisian double crochet. And now for the return, we're going to yarn over and pull through one loop on our hook. And then for the rest of the row, it's yarn over and pull through two loops on your hook. And you wanna repeat this all the way across. And this is what your work should look like after the first completed row of Tunisian double crochet. On our next row, 
the first loop. The loop on our hook counts as our first chain and we'll chain one. So that together counts as our first stitch. And we're going to, for our next stitch on the second row, it's yarn over your hook, insert your hook into the bar, the, into that next vertical bar. So the first stitch we're skipping because the loop on our hook and the chain one count as our first stitch. So it's this vertical bar of the second stitch that we're going to insert into. So it's yarn over, insert your hook in the vertical bar, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, and we'll repeat that all the way across. Yarn over, insert your hook in the next vertical bar, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, and we'll repeat this all the way across. Okay, this is what your work should look like after the forward pass of the second row of Tunisian double crochet. And now the return on this row is exactly the same as the previous row. It's yarn over, pull through one loop on your hook, and then yarn over, pull through two loops on your hook, and you want to repeat yarn over, pull through two loops on your hook all the way across. If you are doing your Camilla Tunisian crochet cardigan in one color, this is all you will need to know to do the body of the back. But if you are changing color, I wanna show you how we do the color changes a little bit differently than we do in normal crochet. So it's we're gonna chain one for our first stitch and then yarn over, insert our hook in the next vertical bar, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, and we'll repeat this across. Okay, so here's where we're going to be changing color if you're doing the stripes for this project. And in Tunisian crochet, I find it so much more interesting to change color this way. And normally we would start the next row with our color, right? And that would give us a more solid change of color. But to keep our colors a little less solid and a little more interwoven, I think it's more interesting to change color on the return pass instead of the forward pass in Tunisian crochet. It's obviously optional. If you want more strict solid stripes, you can do them at the beginning, but if you like them a little softer and a little more interwoven, and you can do this on any Tunisian crochet pattern, change your colors when you're changing color on the return pass instead of the forward pass, and I'll show you what that looks like now. So I'm gonna grab my new yarn and loop it over my finger, do that first yarn over, pull through one loop with the loop on my finger, and then complete the rest of my return pass with yarn over, pull through two, just like we do on every Tunisian crochet return pass in this pattern. And you can see how the colors are more woven together than they are just a solid step from one color to the next. And you'll see that even more when we start the next row. So we'll do the next row, which is like we've done before. It's chain one for the first stitch, yarn over, insert your hook in the vertical bar of the next stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two. And we'll just do another entire row of Tunisian double crochet in the next color so I can show you how that looks. And as you can see here, even just after the forward pass of the next row, you can see how soft that color changes because the return pass of the previous row was in color B and it, it's interwoven with the forward pass from the previous color A. And then starting color B forward pass up here, you can see how the striping is really soft and interesting. If you don't like it, you can always change your colors at the beginning of the row instead. And then the return pass for this row and all rows for this pattern is yarn over, pull through one loop on your hook, and then yarn over, pull through two, and repeat yarn over, pull through two across the row. Okay, so working the back is going to be done exactly as I've shown you, working back and forth with no increases or decreases, changing color if you want to, not changing color if you don't want to. The other thing that I wanted to show you is how to do the neck shaping when you come to doing the fronts. And the neck shaping is done at the end of the fronts, and you have to reverse shaping on each side to get each side of the neck edge. And so on the first one, it's going to tell you to slip stitch across a few stitches before beginning a row. So what that means is you're going to insert your hook into the next vertical bar and simply slip stitch across however many stitches it tells you to slip stitch across then chain one for that first stitch, 
and then continue on working your Tunisian double crochet front pass. And doing your same Tunisian double crochet return pass. Same thing we've done throughout this pattern. But I want to show you, I'm going to show you on the same row, although you wouldn't be doing it on the same row. You would be doing one of these on the right front and one of them on the left front, and you'll refer to your pattern to see which one requires which. <clears throat> and so you're going to do the shaping like this on one of the fronts and then on the other front instead of slip stitching across to create the shaping you'll be skipping some stitches at the end of the row to create the reverse shaping and the pattern is done all the return passes are done exactly the same way it's yarn over pull through one loop on your hook and then yarn over pull through two loops on your hook and you want to repeat yarn over pull through two loops on your hook all the way across your rows the rest of the sections of this pattern are done in simple double crochet and the only thing that you would need to be familiar with is how to pick up and work a row of single crochet into the row ends of Tunisian crochet. Obviously if you're going to work them into the beginning row you would work into each chain from the foundation single crochet and if you were going to work a row of double crochet into the tops of the last row worked in Tunisian double crochet you would simply work into each one of these loops. They count as they each one count as a stitch. But if you're doing the row ends here, each row end is the equivalent of two double crochets. So you're going to uh, slip stitch to join in the corner, work chain two to count as your first double crochet, and then one double crochet in that same space. And in each of the end rows across, it's yarn over, insert your hook, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, that's one double crochet and then a second double crochet in that same row end. And you'll want to work two double crochets in each row end across whichever surface you're adding. So this works. This is going to work across the shoulders for creating the sleeve. This is going to work across the fronts to create the collar. This works across the lower edge to create the, the vents. So if you're working row ends, it's two double crochets per row end, and then it's one double crochet per stitch if you're working along the bottom edge of each section or along the top edge of each section. All of this information is written out per size in all of the five sizes in the pattern. You can find links to the pattern as well as Be So Baby yarn in 60 colors and information on how to combine different colors to create a five color combination to create this pattern as well. All of those links are provided in the video description below. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions at all, please leave them for me in the comments. Everything we talked about today, you can find as links in the video description below. Let us make time to create, share, and inspire today and every day. I'll see you in the next video.